In this video, I'm going to send a 1 volt digital signal uh, down a 100 ohm transmission line into a 50 ohm load. Now, because there's a mismatch here, we're going to see a reflection. So I'm going to plot in the blue line the uh, sum of the transmitted and reflected waves, the voltages you'd see on the transmission line. And the red line is just going to be the reflected wave off of this. The reflection uh, should be um, uh, related to the load in the transmission line, so 50 minus 100 divided by the 50 plus 100, or minus a third volt uh, reflection. So here we have the uh, digital signal coming down the line, and as soon as it hits, I'm going to slow this down. So we have this red reflected wave uh, coming off of the load, it's minus a third of a volt, and uh, wherever we have zero volts for our uh, voltage on the transmission line, uh, it's going to pull it down uh, by a third of a volt, so we'll actually get negative voltage on the line. And wherever we have this uh, one volt peak uh, and it intersects with this minus a third of a volt, it's going to pull this down. So we're going to get this weird rippling effect, uh, and that's just due to the transmitted wave uh, summing with the reflected wave. To reiterate, the blue curve is the sum of all of the incident and reflected waves. The red curve is the reflected wave off of the 50 ohm load. Separating out the reflected wave, or the incident wave, from the overall voltage on the line can be helpful, not just to improve our intuition, but it's at the heart of an important concept, S-parameters.